Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is uh, Tolfer Talks. And um, this channel is about, primarily about comic books. And um, today it's brought to you by 3.75 inch Daredevil and his OG Stormtrooper buddy, um, I don't know, Frank. Coincidentally, his name is Frank. And um, anyway, without uh, these two, today's video would not have been possible. So anyway, thanks for checking it back in. Um, I'm working on a comic. It's called Winterland. Um, the Indiegogo page is dang near ready. Uh, there's a video. Well, the first video on this channel is uh, kind of a preview. So, you know, please check it out. But today, I thought we'd look at Sin City. Um, I've been seeing some talk on social media about Frank Miller and the discussion seems to center around, you know, his legit legitimacy as a comic book artist. And, um, man, I cannot figure it out. But um, I grew up in the 80s. And so, I mean, for me, Frank Miller is just uh, part of my just as they're saying now, comic book DNA. You know, Claus Jansen and uh, Frank Miller were just a big part of, um, you know, my monthly reading for uh, years. You know, and um, there was just these were books that, man, every every month I looked forward to them. Man, I wanted to see where the story went. Um, when the story was over, kind of came to a conclusion, man, it was hard to, sometimes it was like kind of sad, but you know what? I tell you, you always knew that, I think I'm missing some issues. I mean, there was something like amazing, you know, coming around the corner, um, like this. So you go from Electra the Electra Saga to Born Again. I mean, unbelievable stuff. You know, I mean, if, um, even if Frank hadn't done nothing after Daredevil, I, I can't imagine how anybody could possibly, you know, question, this is a Jansen cover. Here's Frank. Yeah, so there's the hatching he's kind of using on, uh, Trying to use on Ronan. Although maybe you don't, yeah, you can kind of see it here. But, uh, I mean, this is really brilliant stuff. I think we could just pick any rant. I don't really remember what was going on in this issue. Maybe we could, we can take a look at this. So, there's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is cool. Good page. Knocks the gun out of the killer's hand. The gun crosses panel borders. Pretty exciting stuff. Got a bubble yum ad. Yeah, man, life was good in the 80s. Oh, geez. And then we all know the reporter. I think this is the reporter. Anybody who watched the, um, the Netflix um, series? Man. This stuff, I mean, this stuff is still being used today. Or recently, anyway. But, um, when was this written? Or published? 83. Wow. Seems like yesterday. <clears throat> but, um, so I thought we could take a look at some more recent work. Because I'm trying to figure out where these people are coming from. And I just don't get it. You know, um, I can see, I don't know, I can't see. I can't really see where the problem is. Uh, when I first picked this up, 
you know, it was kind of stark. And, um, you know, not just because it was black and white, but, I mean, it's really black and white. You know, there's a lot of, I don't know if you, in this case, that would be maybe negative space. But, I mean, this is really great stuff. This uh, Marv here, a picture is worth a thousand world words. I don't think, um, I mean, you know what Marv's about just by looking at that picture. Boy. You know, the one thing I wondered about um, looking through this is he uses the brick, you know, as a texture, as a pattern, a lot, and tile. And then other than that, there's a lot of backgrounds that are pretty much, you know, empty. I'm not sure. I'm sure that's a choice he made, and if there's a reason for it, I don't really know what it is, but... It'd be interesting to find out, because it seems like, um, you know, he simplified things, but the things he chose to um, emphasize are, um, you know, right there in front of you. Again, more brick, more brick. There's a scene back here, I think, after uh, Goldie's murdered. Um, yeah, like right here, more of that brick. You know, but this is cool. You know, I suppose that's like, uh, you know, nib and then great brushwork. You know, the combination, the way he, he uh, mixes it up is, I don't know, to me it's pretty amazing. I get that this isn't photo real and we're seeing a lot of, um, I don't know, like uh, with digital coloring and everything, uh, the look of comics have really changed a lot over the years, um, you know, since uh, Daredevil was being published in the 80s. But, you know, this is, to me, pretty powerful stuff. And as I go back and look through it, you know, second and third time, it just kind of gets better. Um, and with my work anyway, I've been looking at it a lot lately because I know, um, I keep hearing about spotting blacks and I don't know, I come from more of a fine art background and that is not, that kind of graphic sort of sensibility just wasn't instilled in me. So I'm hoping to maybe learn a little bit about that by osmosis, just by reading these books. But, um, so yeah, this is like me reconnecting with Frank, which is pretty cool. I highly recommend this if you haven't read it. It gets pretty gruesome, but I don't know. What do you expect? It's film noir. I don't know. I think that's supposed to be a Porsche. That looks more like a Carmen Ghia to me, but hey, small, small criticism. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how. Um, I think I marked this one, or I, book, I bookmarked it for the, you know, the chapter page, the splash page. I like, uh, it looks like maybe this was done entirely with brush, which to me is pretty impressive. You know, that's a real simplified kind of... Um, you know, outlined figure, but you still get the sense of uh, Frank running through the trees. But uh, yeah, this is where it gets really weird. I always have a hard time with this kind of thing. But, um, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to go through the end in case there was uh, there's someone else out there that hasn't read it because it is... For me, anyway, it was kind of a surprise ending. I wasn't expecting it. Cause I, um, 
But yeah, so I mean, I started off with uh, Daredevil. I tried to follow Frank. I don't know. I just couldn't do it. Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, Roman was, you know, it's a beautiful book. But I just couldn't get into it. And I think that was kind of, I mean, I'm not the only one from what I understand. It was kind of a tough, tough sell. But, uh, you know, the artwork is, is really pretty fantastic. And then, you know, I think um, this was before, before year one. I guess this is November of 83. I don't know when these came out. I need to rebag these. Oh, 87. Yes, this was later. Um, so I think he just wrote. Frank was just the writer on this. And um, I don't know. This was great stuff also. I think um, if I had a problem with it, it was just... Uh, I don't know. What was stupid? I um, The trade paper... I was in school, in college at this point, and um, I think that... I mean, the trade paperback was like in the school bookstore. <laughs> you know, it was just so easy to get a hold of. It seemed like a lot of people were buying it. And um, it was annoying that the people I knew that had it didn't know anything about Daredevil or, you know, um, comics in general. But, I mean, you know, looking back on it, it was cool that they had copies. And um, anyway, but yeah. I think, um, I don't know, I'm pro-Frank. I hope you are too. But, whatever. This is Winterland. This is my book. Um, look for the Indiegogo sign-up page. Please, you know, like and subscribe to these videos. I'm getting a lot of views, or what, I mean, not a lot, but I kind of thought they'd sit at, you know, two or three views each. Um... But, um, picking up some views, but, um, sadly, not many subs. So, anyway, hopefully the videos will get better and people will feel like they want a sub. But until then, I'm just gonna beg, sub, please. Anyway, um, cheers. I'll catch you later.